Armani Hasuigan, Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe, join the Foreman group for the latest videos, please visit Facebook Armani Hasuigan, and here please like. In this video we will talk about the spinal cord. We know the spinal cord is part of the central nervous system with the brain. The spinal cord is connected to the brain stem which then connects to the brain up on the top there. Now the spinal cord is uniformly organized and is divided into five regions, some people say uh, four. Either way, um, each of these regions have a number of paired of spinal nerves coming out of them. So what I mean by this is, for example, the first region of the spinal cord is known as a cervical uh, region, and this has eight pairs of spinal nerves coming out. So these red things, there are spinal nerves coming out, eight pairs. The thoracic region has 12 pairs of spinal nerves. The lumbar region has five pairs of spinal nerves. The sacral region also has five pairs of spinal nerves. And there's another region where we have one pair of spinal nerves. These nerves are known as the coccygeal nerves because they're sort of close to the cox uh, um, spine of the spine. So if we do our awesome mathematics, we can see that we have 31 pairs of spinal nerves, which equates to 62 spinal nerves. So each of these regions of the spinal cord, each of these five regions of the spinal cord are actually different in shape. So if we were to take a cross section of the cervical region here, it would look something like this. But before we continue on, the person I draw on the right, we are looking at him from a posterior view. We're looking at his spinal cord from a posterior view, from the back. But the cross sections of the spinal cord I am drawing, we're looking at it from an anterior view. So please know that the cross sections I'm drawing in the spinal cord now, are we're looking at it from an anterior view. So anyway, this is what a cervical region of the spinal cord would look like. And here we have a pair of spinal nerves um, attacked, attaching to this spinal cord. The spinal nerve consists of a ventral root, the front root, and a dorsal root, the back root, which connects to the spinal cord. The spinal cord itself consists of a gray matter in the middle, and white matter surrounding it. The hole in the center is known as the central canal, which contains cerebrospinal fluid, which helps in nourishing the nervous tissue. And we should know what the gray and white matter is because that's, that was taught in the previous um, neurology videos. Now, if we were comp to compare the cervical region of the spinal cord to the thoracic region of the spinal cord, the thoracic region would look uh, much rounder in shape. And remember, we're looking at it from an anterior view. And the lumbar region, on the other hand, looks a bit like a more of a pyramid shape. Not only that, but the lumbar region of the spinal cord has a much thicker gray matter compared to the other regions. So as you can see, the regions of the spinal cord are all different in shape and all have different thickness of the gray matter, for example. But all of these regions contain spinal nerves. So let's just learn a bit more about the spinal nerves and about its anatomy. Um, the spinal nerves, which connect to the spinal cord, is part of the peripheral nervous system, you can say because it carries information between the central nervous system and the periphery, because it brings information to the central nervous system, to the spinal cord, and also takes information from the central nervous system, from the spinal cord. So let's just zoom into the spinal nerve um, here to learn a bit more about the anatomy. So here we have the spinal nerve. The nerve is surrounded by a membrane known as an epineuroneum. We also find blood supply here. And also, 
many bundles of neuron which make up what's called a fascicle. The fascicle, if we pull one out, also consists of a membrane called the perineuroneum. Now, as mentioned, these fascicles, they contain many neurons. Let's just pull one out. Here we have a neuron, which is surrounded by an endoneuroneum, another membrane. This neuron, this neuron is also wrapped by Schwann cells containing myelin. And so this is a myelinated axon of the neuron. I hope that makes sense. And as we know, myelinated axons, they generate faster impulses. So now that we know a bit more about the spinal nerve, let's just go back to the spinal cord and look at what sort of membranes it have and let's learn a bit more about its anatomy. By doing this, let's just take a cross section of the spinal cord of the thoracic region. Now this spinal cord I'm drawing, which is part of the thoracic region, it can represent any, any section of the spinal cord, but I'm just drawing this for simplicity. Because the spinal cord is so important and it's part of the central nervous system, it of course has to have some form of protection, some form of barrier, and it does. It has three layers of protection. From the most inner membrane, it has the pia mater, then it has the arachnoid membrane, then it has the dura mater. And these three make up what's known as the meninges, which serve as a protective barrier of the central nervous system against harmful things. The central canal, the central canal which also contains the cerebrospinal fluid, also is a form of protection for the spinal cord. Um, as the cerebrospinal fluid also acts like a shock absorber in the central nervous system. Now back to the spinal cord section. Coming out of each side of the spinal cord region, we have spinal nerves, right? We know that. To make this easier, we can draw a line here and say that the spinal cord is part of the central nervous system and the spinal nerves are part of the peripheral nervous system. The spinal nerve that is part of the peripheral nervous system consists of a ventral root, the front root, and a dorsal root, the back root. But both are connected to the spinal cord and both also join up with each other to form a big spinal nerve. The dorsal root contains also a dorsal ganglion. We can also have another ganglion here, which we will discuss about later on. Ganglion is basically a location where synapses can occur and also where, where cell bodies are located. It's basically bundles of neurons. But anyway, the dorsal root of the spinal nerve is always for, is always for sensory neurons, and these are where sensory neurons are. So sensory neurons bring in sensory information to the spinal cord via the dorsal root here. And then it will synapse with another neuron in the central nervous system in the spinal cord, which will then, which this new neuron will then bring this sensory information to the brain or the brainstem or somewhere in the central nervous system for processing, for interpretation. So what I mean is that all sensory neurons from the periphery, such as this sensory neuron I am drawing with myelin wrapping around it, this will receive some form of sensory stimulation, be it touch, pain, pressure, or whatnot. This will bring this sensory information to the central nervous system through the dorsal root of the spinal nerve. The sensory neuron's body is located in the dorsal ganglion here. Then the sensory neuron will pass on the information to the second neuron. The second neuron will then bring this sensory information to the brain or brainstem for processing, for realizing that there is some sensory information coming to, to the body. Now, if the dorsal root is for sensory neurons bringing in sensory information to the central nervous system, that means the ventral root is for 
the efferent neurons, for the motor neurons. So, for example, signals or commands from the brain or brainstem will come down to a particular location in the spinal cord. And then these neurons will then synapse with efferent neurons here, also known as motor neurons, which will bring this command, this information, um, somewhere to a target tissue. Now this efferent neuron, this motor neuron, is actually a somatic neuron, which means that it is bringing information or commands to initiate movement. So it's going to bring information commands to skeletal muscle for contraction, for example. And this neuron, therefore, is voluntary because we can control movement. It is a somatic neuron. However, there is another type of neuron, um, another type of efferent neuron that can bring information out of the central nervous system. This neuron will, in red, will actually stop over in this ganglion and synapse with another efferent neuron. This efferent neuron is, or motor neuron, is known as an autonomic neuron because it is part of the autonomic nervous system. It is controlled involuntary. It will bring information or bring commands from the central nervous system to uh, tissues, target cells and tissues such as cardiac muscle cells, smooth muscle cells, and certain glands or all glands, because we don't we have no control over these types of cells. Now let's just look at it as a as a summary. We have the central nervous system where we have the spinal cord, and within the spinal cord we have neurons that carry sensory information and also carry commands within the spinal cord. Then we have the peripheral nervous system, which consists of two types of neurons. We have the sensory neurons and we have the efferent neurons, also known as the motor neurons. The sensory neurons bring information to the central nervous system, whereas the efferent neurons take information from the central nervous system to a target cell, to a target tissue, to the periphery. So here we're looking at the efferent neurons. So commands or information from the central nervous system will travel via efferent neurons. Efferent neurons can be either somatic, meaning that they are voluntary, or autonomic, meaning that they're involuntary. And this all depends on what uh, type of target tissue or cell um, um, it's going to. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It's only an introduction to the spinal cord. I'll have another video that will go into a bit, sort of a bit more detail, and it might be even easier than this one. So look forward to that, and I'll probably provide a link. Thank you for watching.